This is a very, let's get into the money, y'all. Let's start the deep dive. Congress. You know how Anton always says things like, isn't it amazing that the overwhelming majority of Congress members, by the time that they die or pass away, are worth literally tens and tens of millions of dollars and they're just public servants? Remember when I was having a conversation on the Anton Daniels channel last Wednesday and I was telling y'all about the importance of power over money and fame? Remember when I was having a conversation with you about uh, just last week about how it is that you need to look at the underlying factors and who's participating in what in order to really judge the health of an industry specifically or where it is that you need to invest your money? Well, it all comes back full circle and it always does. And one of the things that we see happening right now, as reported, is that Congress are buying war stocks. Let's deep dive into it. First, let me give you a little bit of insight of what's happening with defense stocks specifically. Major defense stocks added around $20 billion in market cap yesterday following the events over the last three days. So Northrop Grumman and Lockheed among those still trending higher. These types of moves are not added $20 billion. The value of these companies have jumped over $20 billion since the war over there in Israel. Ain't that crazy? Hmm. Uncommon during times of war. Now a similar surge happened when Russia invaded Ukraine. And you're looking at some of the movement that we're seeing today in Lockheed Martin up just about 1% as well as Boeing, RTX, and Northrop also once again moving to the upside. Now these gains coming on, like we just said, a strong day for the stocks. Yesterday we saw a big jump. Northrop coming off its biggest daily gain since we've seen uh, that we've seen since 2020. So just about three years there, but the thought process is just in terms of the amount of spending, what's going to be allocated towards some of these defense companies, given the conflict and the risk that this uh, war could widen over in the Middle East. That's why we're seeing the reaction play out in shares today. Once yeah, and, and from a technical perspective, too, it'd be interesting to look at this for anyone who's trying to figure out if some of the spikes that take place after there are international conflicts or, or events of international conflict where some of the defensive names continue to cyclically in this instance here get some type of attention from investors. So before we actually deep dive into this, let me do a little bit of a rewind because we like to do our research and we want to make sure that we get all of the insight and information necessary in order to provide you with the information. This was some time ago. Well over a year ago, well over a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, almost two years ago, y'all wasn't paying attention, but we had a conversation about it, and I definitely am going to bring it up and throw it in your face again. Over almost two years ago, literally almost two years ago, this is what happened when, with regard to Ukraine. Bankers on Capitol Hill were trading stocks in defense companies, just as Russia was getting ready to invade Ukraine. One of those lawmakers is the Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia. Records show she bought stock in the defense contractor Lockheed Martin just one day before the invasion started last month. Lockheed Martin and Raytheon jointly make these missile launchers called Javelins. <laughs> the United States already sent thousands of them to Ukraine, and President Biden just promised the country thousands more to help defend against the Russian forces. On the same day Congresswoman Greene made the Lockheed investment, she also tweeted in part, war and rumors of war is incredibly profitable and convenient. She later responded to criticism of the investment, saying, our investment advisor has full discretionary authority over our accounts. We have owned this American company for years, and this small investment was part of our overall investment strategy. The critics say lawmakers should not be able to trade individual stocks. They receive all sorts of information that all the rest of us do not. And there's a new push to pass a bill that bans lawmakers from doing exactly that. And I wonder how far that bill went. It went nowhere. We've seen different lawmakers talk about it. They postured in front of it. And you know what they know? They know what we know. That yesterday's news was yesterday. And today's news is a new distraction that then points you in a specific direction it's not necessarily conducive for what it is that you're supposed to be doing, fam. But let's pivot for a minute. Let's continue. That was almost two years ago, and nobody cared. 
Now, what is happening today? Members of Congress are cashing in on war, both the war in Ukraine and now the conflict in Israel-Palestine. According to Unusual Wales Politics, which keeps tabs on congressional trades, lawmakers on Capitol Hill have been purchasing war stocks. Both Republicans and Democrats bought General Dynamics stocks, and while Republicans bought more on the energy and oil front, Democrats poured their money into cybersecurity stocks. The heavy. Let, let, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute you telling me that legislators on both sides of the aisle couldn't work together in order to get a deal done when it came to making sure that we got the budget together and we had to extend it another 45 days just so we can be doing the same thing next year and the same thing in another 45 days because they don't have a budget together but they had time to make sure that they all collaborated and cooperated their their defense buying and their energy sectors that they wanted to participate in. Come on, man. They're privy to information that you do you guys don't have. When I had the conversation with y'all last Wednesday and y'all debated me, and shout out to my guy Freezy. I'm gonna use him as an example. But me and Freezy was having this conversation, and it'll probably be released in a clip sometime soon. And I said, listen, marriage is a business and it is first a power dynamic and we are vetting incorrectly as to the people that we should be aligning ourselves with. I've woken up. I've made adjustments. I have a different mindset when it comes to what it is that I would do and if it's conducive to what it is that I'm trying to accomplish long term. The first thing that I would probably try to do is align myself with somebody in a position of power or who is, who's trending in that direction. And Freezy said, Anton, I can't do it, man. I need my girl to cook and clean and all of this other type of stuff, right? And we was talking about Diane Feinstein, right? And Diane Feinstein is largely believed to have been worth well over $100 million. Uh, her husband was a Wall Street guy, and she just so happened to be a lifetime legislator out there in California. And she just so happened to also have a private golf dream jet that is alleged to be worth over $65 million. Now, 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 now. It's very interesting to me, very interesting to me, that people could have so much information on what is about to happen, what is going to happen, and they determine the laws. They determine what is going to happen with our budget, where they're going to allocate the monies to, that you guys vote them in the office for. And you are sitting here having a conversation with me about the wrong things. Every last one of these people are doing well. The Democrats said, listen, we going to invest in cybersecurity. <laughs> the Republicans said, we're investing in the energy sector. And both of them said, we're going to combine our forces like Voltron and invest in defense stocks. If you want to understand where the country is going, if you want to understand where the pulse of things are, ha what's happening, all you got to do is follow the money. It is not about policy, legislation, doing the things. And this is just my personal opinion. It is not about Palestine, legislation, doing the things that's in the best interest of the people. You need to find out who the contractors are that they're then giving these social programs over to. You need to understand who's who's the publicly traded company that's a part of what's happening with the migrant crisis. You need to understand housing. It all comes back down to the money. I'm telling you. Lobbyists are in Washington on a regular basis because of the money. Donations. They don't care about the fact that who's going to get in the office or whatever. Don't you know that Donald Trump... Uh, before he became president, when he was just looked at purely as a businessman, donated to both Republican and Democrat sides. Don't you know that they donated to both? Don't you know that they get rich no matter what? There's people in the game that don't really care who's going to be president. They just want to make sure that they attach to them when they do become president.
wartime stock buying didn't just happen following the onset of the war in Ukraine, but there was a surge that hasn't receded. In August, Mississippi Congressman Michael Guest purchased about $15,000 worth of ExxonMobil stock, currently up and trading at $109 per unusual <laughs> whales. Numerous politicians from both sides of the aisle are tailoring their investment portfolios based on these defense contractors and energy companies, all of which lobby Capitol Hill heavily. Uh, this is <laughs> just another reason we really got to ban members of Congress from you're not banning nothing. Listen, they, I just showed y'all a video where they was having the same conversation two years ago, and nobody cares. You know what y'all was consumed with? Abortion rights. Asking for reparations. Modern women in relationships. Systematic oppression. The latest song that came out, whether or not Beyonce was going to be touring in your city. Everything that you see happening is a distraction from the things that actually matter. If you want to get a poll, listen, I've always understood. I remember when I used to go to work at Root Steel, local 600 back in the early 2000s. And every day I would get three different newspapers. I would get uh, USA Today, the Wall Street Journal. And then I would get whatever the local newspaper is that was more interesting, the free press, or I would get um, um, DET News, right? Because I wanted to know what was happening locally. I wanted to know what was happening internationally. And I also wanted to know what was happening financially, right? And the first section that I would open up from every newspaper was the business section. It gave me a pulse of what the direction of the city was going in. It gave me a pulse of what was happening in the financial markets. And it also gave me a pulse of what the real focus was internationally. The business section of any newspaper, of any, any site, any vlog is the most valuable section for you to read. It will then dictate what happens over at the political section. It will then dictate what happens over here when it comes to pop culture and your cultural norms. If you want to understand what is happening, right, you need to be subscribing to the right sites. Bloomberg. Market Watch. Yahoo Business, somebody said investors, uh, Inside Business Daily, Wall Street Journal, right? Fuck Forbes, oh, no, I'm sorry, scratch that from the, from, the, from the record, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. Forget Forbes, they're just estimating and keeping you entertained. Forget the Rob Report, we ain't tripping off of that. If you want to understand how people are participating and buying the things that's in the Rob Report with two Bs, then you need to understand what is happening from a financial perspective and then how that intersects with po politics and then popular culture. It's too much money out here. It's too much money floating around and everybody grabbing a piece of it but you. And the only thing that you're doing is trying to earn as much as you possibly can, going on strike, keep talking about the rich, and let me tell you something. The rich is still going to be rich and you're still going to be poor whether they pay you $45 an hour, $50 an hour, or $100 an hour. You're going to pay the most in taxes. You're going to be the least informed. You're going to be the one that has all of the information right in front of you and fail to just actually grasp it. And you're going to be easily distracted by endless streams and end endless scrolls of TikToks in order to keep you subdued and then being easily marketed to on the things that's not best for you. That is the truth. You're not interested in foreign affairs. You're not interested in what's really happening and who's benefiting over in Ukraine. You're not really trying to understand how things are being modified as far as the food short. You don't even know what's happening over there in legislation in California as far as them banning additives that go into your food and then who's going to benefit as a result of it. You have no clue whatsoever. No clue. You are supremely uninformed, misinformed, and then you misrepresent yourself as to being a con a productive member of society because you pretend like you know about money, but you don't know nothing about nothing. You are out here. You just out here. You play the lottery every day because you gambling on your future. You don't even understand how to, how to execute properly. You just distracted. You don't even know how to hold down a relationship. You don't even know how to manage your own finances. Most of y'all don't even got a budget. You ain't even got a calendar. You ain't even a part of the Patreon. I don't want to hear nothing from you. Keep talking about starting a business. You don't even know nothing about unemployment insurance. Taxes, the difference between an LLC and an S-Corp, sole proprietorship, 
why you should have an LLC instead of a sole proprietorship, what you filing on, Schedule Cs, tax ID numbers, and why that's relevant to you, why it's important for you to be able to separate every single business, what an umbrella company is. You too focused on how you feel and whether or not you can get your little dick wet instead of being focused on the thing that's going to be best for you and how you can run that bag up. But I'm going to educate you today. Yeah, I'm going to bring you to the front of the congregation today.